Right. I had a couple of viewers comment about my triplet uh, 630. Um, this is a, a pretty high precision instrument for its day, although you can actually still buy these today. So I think they're around 300, uh, no, uh, $420, I think, to buy these brand new, about $420. The newer models are a little bit different than this one. So uh, it's true with the Simpson meters as well. The Simpson meters seems to be, every time you turn around, they seem to be a bit different. There's the, the uh, 260 series. Um, this one's a little bit higher accuracy than the Simpson meters. The Simpson meters, I think, are around 2% accurate. This one is 1.5% accurate. Um, if you take a look at a Simpson meter, uh, it has about 12 positions for the switch, and this has 20 positions for the switch. So they can have uh, smaller ranges to increase the accuracy. I think that's how they do it. Um, okay, so um, I've talked about analog meters before. Big fan of analog meters for a lot of measurements. So the way these work is that you have to choose the range. They're not auto-ranging, of course. Uh, there's AC measurements and DC measurements. And interestingly, there's an off position. Um, so uh, this one goes from a three volt full scale to 6,000 volt per, per full scale. So pretty, pretty wide range of voltages. Now the 6,000 volt is a bit, is a bit odd. Um, if you uh, have connections here. The common is here, that's your ground, and here's where your volts, ohms, and amps would, be, would connect. Okay, these two. Um, if you want to do the super high voltage ones, though, if you're connected here, this range is 1200 volts. If you want to do the 6000 volt range, you need to use these two connectors over here because there's additional div divider resistors in there. So this is a 6000 volts AC and 6000 volts DC here. Um, and those do come in handy. I've used them before. Okay, so current current ranges, it goes from 60 microamps, which is this just you're talking to the meter directly. The, the meter takes 60 microamps to go full scale. And then uh, 1.2 milliamps, 12 milliamps, 120 milliamps, and 12 amps. <laughs> wow. Uh, or is that just 2 amps? No, I think that's 12 amps. Um, okay, it also has um, ohms, so it re requires a battery in order to measure ohms. The uh, times, times 1, times 10, times 100 um, are all done with a D cell, a 1.5 volt D cell. In order to have the uh, times 10,000, uh, 100,000, you have to have a 30 volt battery, which I don't, I don't have in this instrument. All right. Um, these meters are still sold today, like I said, but they're going to look a little bit different from the outside. They will be different from this. Like I said, every time you turn around, these meters seem to change. Um, there is a dB uh, scale on these as well, but nobody uses that anymore. This is kind of for the telecom industry back when six, 600 ohms was a standard, and you could measure dBms uh, with a 600 volt impedance line, but so just ignore the dBm these days. Um, all right. So uh, you might be wondering, what is that tag on the front? All right. So I got this used, obviously. Um, this is the LRL AEC. <laughs> and it took me a while to kind of wrap my head around that when I first. Uh, I forget how I acquired this thing. I think it came as part of a lot of things that I bought. I've, I've done a, a short video on this once before, but it was buried in a different video, and I just couldn't find it. So this, is, this video will be exclusively just for the triplet. Um, this is Lawrence Radiation Laboratory, Atomic Energy Commission. <laughs> so this, this meter was made, designed, uh, or used in a facility that designed uh, atomic weapons. <laughs> so yeah, how's that? Uh, and it has an asset tag on it. I almost ripped the tag off when I first got it. I'm glad I didn't, because uh, that's just super cool. Yeah, uh, Lawrence Lawrence is over here in Berkeley, California. Uh, very, very interesting. Yes, I have taken a Geiger counter to this thing and make sure, <laughs> make sure it's not radioactive. <laughs> but uh, yeah, let's uh, let's uh, open the back up of this, uh, of this thing. It's really, it's really pretty inside. These things are, I think, Bakelite. Bakelite uh, cases. I think this one's still Bakelite. It might be plastic. This one's big. Uh, some of the really old ones are Bakelite. Uh, and uh, it takes 
some four screws and we'll open it up. Okay, there you go. These things are beautiful inside. Uh, here's where the battery attaches. Let's just go ahead and remove that for now. Um, like I said, there's two batteries that go in here. There's a 30 volt battery that goes at the bottom and then the D cell up at the top here. Uh, there's a fuse for the, uh, for the ammeter. Um, but every single uh, setting for the uh, switch here, and it's a sealed switch as well, which is pretty cool. But uh, the uh, multi-wafer switch here, it's one, two, three, four layer multi multi-position switch. And then here are all of the uh, resistors that do all of the ranges. And then we have a couple uh, diodes across the across uh, for AC measurements here. We have a, uh, a really fancy resistor here. Let me zoom out a bit, a bit too close. Uh, so the place where you put the 6,000 volts in has to go through this resistor. This is a 72 mega ohm resistor. Um, so a pretty special thing. It's got an insulator on the top, so you don't, make sure you don't zap yourself, I guess, or make sure it doesn't arc. Make sure it doesn't arc to the rest of the circuit here. Um, so yeah, that's how it gets its uh, gets its high range here. So it's a divider with a 72 mega ohm resistor, and here's a here's a, tw a 24 mega ohm resistor. Yeah, there's there's some fun stuff in here for. 4.5 mega ohm resistor and then some really low ohm resistors here that are just a few turns a few turns of wire uh, so yeah pretty accurate things inside uh, and there's a calibration adjustment here on the meter uh, let's take a look at down here this uh, piece of big stout wire here is actually the uh, uh, shunt for the uh, 12 amp range and uh, it wraps all the way around the meter and comes out over here yeah it's pretty nice inside Let's see if we can get a date code on this thing I'm I'm assuming this is the date code here, 1980. Here's another 80. It's probably 1980. Um, it's nice to put a, put a spare fuse in here. Very nice. All right. Put our battery back in. There's a little cup here for the positive. That's pretty cool. Uh, so there's brass nut inserts for the for the case it's built really nicely all right put the top back on there's a a, a leather leather strap that goes on there's an inspection sticker here all right let's uh, get this together and turn it on all right once again um, this is the common and this is the uh, positive side for volts ohms and amps uh, we can measure some voltage here. Uh, we've got a battery. We can measure the... Uh... So when you're using an old analog meter, you have to hook up the plus and minus correctly. Otherwise, it won't, it won't work. Uh, it doesn't, doesn't do negative... Uh, it doesn't do negative volts. The Simpsons have a little lever or a, a switch, a rotary switch that lets you sw uh, switch between positive and negative. But I think it's better just to be... be be good about it and make sure that you always hook it up the right way the first time. Not a bad habit to get into. So we have it set to the three volt scale and we are measuring DC volts. So we're gonna be using the black. It says here DC, we'll be using the black letters. If we were on AC, we'd be using the red, the red letters. And if we were using ohms, we'd be using that outside scale, which is kind of a logarithmic scale or a square scale or something like that. Probably square. Or, V squared over R, right? something like that. Um, and then the dB scale, of course, is logarithmic. And uh, there's also one extra funny scale, which is a 3-volt AC scale that's a little bit different and 
um, but it was included just for completeness, I guess. All right, so we're on the three volt scale and we're measuring about one and a half volts, okay? So that 150 number there is about one and a half. So that's what our battery's doing. Uh, we can measure a resistor here. We've got a 50 ohm resistor. So we can go over here to ohms. And we're using a, uh, an analog meter. You need to zero them. So you'll put the, uh, you put the leads and, and, and set them up to zero. And you can see that we are not zero. So there's this zero adjust here. And you zero adjust it. Uh, again, we're going to be using the outside scale. And there's zero over there. So we're going to, we're going to be setting it so that we see, we see zero. And now we're calibrated. And we can put the resistor in. And uh, it is measuring uh, way over there. So we're on the times one scale. So it says it's about 45 <laughs> on the scale. So we're not getting very good accuracy because it gets the numbers get closer and closer and closer together over here. So we should be using the times 10 scale. And that will get us in the middle here. But we need to re-zero again. So every time you change ranges on in, uh, resistance, you need to re-zero. So we're going to zero it again and um, measure the resistor. So we've gone to the times 10 scale. And uh, we use the same scale for all of them. We just multiply it by 110 or 1,000 or whatever. So we're here at 5 now. So we're about 49 ohms. That's what, that's what it says, right? All right. Um, for uh, amperage, you need to be a little bit careful um, with meters. Anytime you use any meter, whether it's digital or analog, you need to be a little bit careful about uh, microamps and stuff like that. So this has a very sensitive uh, measurement scale. It has 60 microamps. All right, so I want to mention one uh, item here, and it's written right on the meter. It says, 20, I know it's kind of obscure, but it's 20,000 ohms per volt. What does it mean to be 20,000 ohms per volt? Okay, so let me put on a, um, a voltage here. I'm putting 12 volts in. It's a little bit low, but putting in 12 volts here. Okay, and that takes a certain number of microamps in order to move the meter all the way over. Now, even though this meter has a... Uh, 60 microamp reading full scale. The meter itself, the actual movement itself is a 50 microamp movement, okay? So it took 50 microamps to deflect it. And we're, and we're inputting 12 volts. So if you have uh, 12 volts and 50 microamps, okay, that's 2,400, 240 k ohms. So it, the internal resistor for this setting, this 12 volt setting, there's a 240 k ohm resistor in there. So that it ends up at 12 volts giving you 50 microamps of current, okay? And let's see if that's really true, okay? So I've got a meter uh, connected to this 12 volts. And we can see if it really is uh, 50 microamps doing the full scale. All right, I'm using my Keithley 2400. I'm forcing 12 volts and I'm measuring the amps and the amps is right about uh, 50, 50 microamps. So indeed it takes about 50 microamps to go full scale on this meter. Um, and you can see that we're a little bit low and that's what the meter is reading. It's reading just about that number, 49.3. All right, so, uh, so if it took uh, 50 microamps at 12 volts, how many ohms is that? What, what would be the resulting ohms? Well, that's that 240 uh, K ohms. And if you divide that by 12, you end up with 20,000 ohms per volt. Okay, so instead of having like a 20 meg ohm input resistance to your digital meter, you've got a 240 K ohm resistance. And that can really screw up your circuit if you add an additional 240 K to it. Um, or if you're only a at a 3 volt reading, right, you're getting 60 K ohms. So 
um, yeah, it can it can affect your reading. So you need to be you need to be aware of that with analog meters. Now, some analog meters will have an FET input in them, and you'll still have really really high input impedance, but have a uh, but have a uh, a digital uh, an analog meter as well. So some of the triplets. Uh, that you can purchase have an FET input, and then they give you, you know, 20,000 uh, mega ohm, uh, 20, 20 mega ohm input resistance, even with a uh, look, what looks like a, a, a dumb analog meter. So, all right, there we go. Anyway, analog meters. This is the triplet uh, 630, one of my favorite favorite meters, and I love the old triplet uh, uh, insignia. They're uh, their name is really nice. These days, it's a it's a different icon, but uh, back in the old days, I, I like that one.